Today's video we'll be looking at the NBI 4200, a 10 MHz 286 computer. So this here is my NBI 4200 286 computer. Uh, now it's pretty much right now in the configuration I got it when I picked it up maybe a month or so ago. Uh, I have the machine here which is actually quite large and heavy. Uh, I believe this is probably an, it's a 286 in there but I believe it's probably based on like the case and the weight and the motherboard. Uh, it's probably an earlier 286. It's 10 megahertz, so it's not the more higher end uh, like 12 and 16 megahertz 286s, and even above they made 20 and 25 megahertz machines. Uh, but it's also not like the really lower end like the 6 and the 8 megahertz. So it's it's kind of in the middle of the 286 range. Um, but I think the 10 megahertz ones were a little bit earlier. Um, not quite sure. Anyways, I have the matching keyboard from NBI that comes with it. And then I have this really cool monochrome, like amber monitor here from uh, Scepter, I believe the name is. Now, this is not the monitor I got when I picked this machine up. Actually, the monitor that came with this machine, and I don't know if that's the monitor that was like sold with it, but when I picked up this machine, the monitor with it was the Amdec amber monochrome monitor. Uh, I recently showed that off with my IBM 5150 in a recent video. Now I've put that monitor away and then I recently came across this one and my original plan was to maybe upgrade this to a VGA card or something like that but after getting this monitor uh, I figured I'd just keep it stock. I would keep the uh, monochrome card in there and I'd just show off this monochrome uh, monitor but it's a pretty neat little uh, monochrome monitor. So without further ado, uh, let me get this monitor and keyboard off here and let's take a look at the machine itself. So here is the computer itself. As I said, it is quite large and uh, it's actually quite heavy. This is a metal case here. Of course, this front is a metal case here. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty heavy. Uh, pretty utilitarian, just, you know, you've got a big brick, basically. Uh, but yeah, it, it's quite heavy, and it's quite large. One of the larger uh, desktop I have, um, I believe it's actually, I think it's about as big as my 5170, but actually maybe a little bit taller. So as you can see here, it has three five and a quarter inch bays. It has this uh, five and a quarter inch disk drive here. I'm guessing it's a 1.2 megabyte floppy, but I haven't confirmed that yet. Um, it has a blank here that kind of lines up flush with it, and then this one's kind of recessed, so I don't remember there's a hard drive behind that. So I have opened this thing up, and I took a brief look inside of it, but that was maybe a month ago, and uh, I kind of remember, I remember like there's a monochrome card in there, and it's an older, kind of like a large motherboard, but other than that, I really don't remember uh, what's in there. I have booted it up, it's got like 512K of memory. Um, that's really about all I remember uh, from my brief look at this machine. So I don't recall if there's a really um, a hard drive in here or not. Uh, other than that, yeah, pretty plain case here. It's got a little bit of flair here with these little like ridges. And then we have NBI 4200 over here, a, a key lock. And then we have this reset button, which is kind of interesting because it's like behind this membrane. Um, so it's kind of a nice feel. And then right here we have a drive, hard drive indicator light. And this is the turbo button, but it doesn't say turbo or speed. It says 10 megahertz. So it's kind of cool that it has like the exact speed on there. I guess when it's in like running in its normal speed. Uh, but then if you like do anything and like change the speed, that can be uh, confusing possibly. But yeah, got a little 10 megahertz uh, light button there. I'm guessing it will turbo down to... Uh, usually it's half, but I don't I don't think it's going to go to 5 megahertz. So I don't know. Maybe it's if it goes down to like 6 megahertz. Um, I don't know. We'll see if I can get this thing. It, it boots. It posts. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see if we can get it running. Maybe I'll run some like benchmarks and we'll see what uh, kind of numbers we get. So uh, let me turn this guy around and uh, take a look at the back. 
So here we are looking at the back of the machine. If you look over here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess I could have learned that right away if I just read the number here, which is eight. They all seem are seemingly empty, except over here we have the monochrome monitor card. And as was common with these monochrome monitor cards, there's also a parallel port. Uh, other than that, we have a standard AT keyboard connector, and it nicely says keyboard right there, so you don't get too confused. And then we just have the power supply. Now, there's no big red or black switch on the side to power it up. You actually just use the power switch on the back to power up and down this machine. Um, this is looking a little crooked right here, so we'll have to take a look. Um, now I've, I've connected the monitor to this. It works fine, but it is a little bit uh, like off-center, so we'll have to see. And looking down here at the tag, let me zoom in a little bit here. So we do have a model number. It is so it looks like PC900 or um, what is that? M M MPF PC900. And then we also have a date code which uh, it wouldn't be 1904. Uh, I'm guessing it's not like 1908. So I'm guessing this machine was manufactured in 1987, which would pretty much make sense. But I don't know. Maybe I'm messing up that date code. But logically, I think uh, 1987 makes the most sense. But let me know if, if I'm wrong on that year of manufacture. Um, all right. So at that point, let's open this guy up and take a look inside. It looks like it should only be like uh, three screws. I don't see any screws on the side. So uh, we'll take a look inside. This will be the second time I've actually looked in there. And um, and after we take a look inside, we'll take a look at, well, let's take a look at the keyboard really quick. Then we'll take a look inside. And then we'll take a look at that cool monitor. And then we'll see how well we can get this thing running and maybe do some small upgrades. But like I said, I think I'm going to just keep the monochrome monitor card. So here is the keyboard that came with it. It's branded NBI. It could use a good cleaning, uh, just like this machine down here could probably use a pretty decent cleaning, but pretty standard keyboard. I don't see anything really uh, weird about it. It does have a power indicator light here on the keyboard. We have your usual cap lock, num lock, scroll lock, but like I said, we also have a little power LED on there. And, uh, it's, of course, it's got the little legs uh, for standing it up. It also has a switch. This switch is completely unlabeled. So I'm guessing this is the switch between maybe PC and XT mode. So, so that's my best guess uh, with that switch. But usually, usually they'll be labeled like PC XT or something. But there's just no labeling at all on this one. So, yeah, that's the keyboard. Pretty standard. Yeah, it feels, doesn't feel great, but it... It feels okay, but I'm not like a keyboard connoisseur or like a keyboard snob, so I don't know. Maybe it feels horrible to like 90% of you out there. It feels perfectly workable to me. So let's take this case off and uh, see what we have inside. All right, here we are inside. Now, if you'll notice, this thing is dusty. It is covered with a nice thick layer of dust. I have not had a chance to clean this machine at all. Uh, this is just the second time I've even been in this machine, and the first time I just kind of took a peek. Uh, so yeah, it is it is uh, super dusty. So have to do a little bit of uh, cleaning there. It's a Velcro strip. I think there must have been like a... Nope, it's, it's completely coming off. Must have been the uh, battery, CMOS battery. Uh, here we are right here. So big open space here. I guess this would be for something like... a. Well, there is some, like, rails there, but there's no openings on the case, so you probably want to put your hard drive here. But if we look over here, there is what seems to be a hard drive right here, maybe an MFM or an RLL hard drive right here. Uh, apparently, it's not working because I have uh, booted this thing up, and it just goes to, like, nothing, like, nothing found. Or it could just be... Maybe there's no operating system on it, or maybe I have to go like play with the BIOS and, and set it up. I haven't really done any of that, so maybe it does work. Um, then we have it empty right there. There's our power supply, and it doesn't look... Man, that is 
big. Uh, <laughs> this looks like if it died, this would be like hard to replace. Maybe as far as form factor. Um, yeah, it's kind of big. Uh, so this isn't off kilter, so it just must be to fix that. I'd probably have to like open this power supply up. I'm probably not gonna mess with it. It's not like messing with my operation or how it works or anything. Uh, but yeah, okay. Uh, here we go with the board. This looks like uh, this is our monochrome card uh, slash printer port. Looks like we have some memory. Now, uh, I don't know if this is also like a weird... I'll have to research this card. I, I guess there's a possibility this is a weird card that also adds system memory because that looks like more memory than maybe would be on a monochrome card, but maybe I'm wrong. We do have memory on the motherboard itself, and it is nice that it's socketed, so... Uh, well, these ones are soldered on, so there is an amount soldered on, but it looks like you can add more memory with a socket. But according to the post right now, there's 512 uh, K. So I'm not sure what the... Maybe that's right. Maybe the, maybe this thing can take a total of like one megabyte. That might make sense uh, now that I think about it. It's a, it is a 286. I it, it, It's so... Like just looking at it, it kind of looks like an, something older, like a... Uh, like an 8088 machine or something, but it is a 286, so maybe maybe it can take a total of one megabyte, and right now there's 512K uh, on there, so I'll have to look it up. I really haven't done any research on this machine. Looks like the ROMs, and then we have our slots here. We have another card. This looks like some kind of MFM RLL hard drive uh, controller card, and then, of course, because we have uh, 16-bit ISA slots. Uh, we could probably fairly easily put like a newer type of hard drive in here, even a CF card without too much trouble. So I might go that route. Um, not sure I want to deal with a old MFM drive on this build. So we'll see. Uh, it looks like we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of these slots are 16-bit ISA to 8-bit ISA slots, so nothing else, kind of a no-frills thing. Now, this is interesting, uh, in a bad way, I guess. I think, under this thick layer of dust here, is a big old piezo speaker. Now, I find that unusual, because usually in these old 286, 386 uh, machines, especially like the older machines, they usually have nice big cone speakers, like actual speakers, uh, since primarily... These were just PC speaker machines. So usually, you know, so a lot of times the manufacturers at least want to give them a good, nice, big speaker for PC speaker sounds. But I don't know, maybe they cheaped out on this one because we just got a nice honking piezo speaker. At least that's what it looks like it is. Uh, anyways, there's the connector there. Doesn't look proprietary, thank goodness. Uh, and there, if we look, right there is our CPU are 10 megahertz 286 and that is a socket type i don't see too often uh usually on boards this old i either see like a standard you know something kind of like uh the ram there but it's of course it's bigger where uh it's you know it's like a socket with pins and you stick the cpu in there or i see the other type uh that's like a socket where the metal pieces are kind of like on the side and usually have to use an extractor tool um, I don't really see this socket type uh, very often. When I do see it, it's usually on stuff of this era, like a 286. Um, I think that empty socket is for a 287 math coprocessor. Not 100% sure. And uh, I do see some switches right there, which I believe we have a silk screen. Yeah, right there. Looks like... Oop. Looks like we have, maybe that's some instructions with silk screen. Maybe that's different memory amounts, and maybe that's between 40 and 80 column modes. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on this guy. This is kind of like a first look. So, um, yeah, that's, there's some jumpers down there. Um, so hopefully I can find... Like uh, something online, like a layout on this board or something like that. So 
I guess I'll do that right now, and then uh, we'll be back. We'll try to boot this thing up. We'll take a look at that monitor, too. You can actually find the jumper uh, layout and everything for this board. It's just the 4200 motherboard, and it is available on uh, Stason. I think that's how, how you pronounce it, Stason. Uh, but it's got all the information here you need. Uh, it is a 6, uh, 10 megahertz motherboard, although according to this, there's a jumper on the board that determines that. And uh, there's no jump, like there's no uh, turbo button on this case. So it's probably a keyboard command. Uh, I guess worst case, if I really wanted, I could like hook up uh, maybe a switch to that jumper and run it out the back uh, if I wanted to. Uh, it does have a maximum onboard of one megabyte. That's what I suspected. Um, so yeah, that's that's good that I have this. It does say it has a speaker connector here. I'll have to take another look. Um, either there's a speaker in that case that I missed, or maybe you can add your own uh, speaker. Um, but anyways, yeah, just uh, normal stuff here. But it's nice I have um, kind of the switch thing if I want to put in the one megabyte of RAM. And um, yeah, there's for the speed selection, and then uh, there's things like the bio selection. Anyways, um, I do have this. I, I brought this out before uh, on the channel. This is, I randomly got this at a swap meet. It's Greg's computer stuff, and it's actually kind of a similar style old uh, 286 uh, motherboard in here. I think this was from a Packard Bell. Anyways, it has the same sort of uh, style uh, for the CPU. There's this little latch here, and you pull it uh, it's, it's kind of a pain. You pull this down, this flops up, and you kind of just pull the CPU out. Um, it doesn't really have any pins, per se. Uh, not like traditional. Uh, uh, but it's kind of a pain to uh, put back in. It's kind of hard to uh, push it down and latch it. Uh, but it does have, I believe, it's the same kind of memory layout uh, with a full one megabyte. So I might uh, pull these chips and put them in the other one and see if it will give me my full one megabyte. Unfortunately, I don't have a 287 in this to transfer, but I might have a, a spare one somewhere, uh, maybe, but I don't know. We'll see. I want to see if I can just get it running as is, and then uh, maybe I'll try upgrading the memory to the full one megabyte. So here is that video card. I pulled it out, and it's from Multitech, an MGA PC. It's the 7F. Now, I did a little bit of research on this card, and apparently this is a Hercules compatible card, um, so hence maybe I think that's extra memory on there uh, for the card. So this should do you know regular monochrome, but also it should run uh, Hercules mode stuff. So we should get be able to get you know uh, monochrome graphics on this card. So that is pretty cool. There's different revisions of it. Uh, I believe there's an earlier like a 2H. I think the most common one is like a 7H. I don't know what. Like seven, this one's a seven F. I don't really know the difference or anything. So, uh, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. This should, like I said, this should be like a full Hercules compatible uh, card. So we'll definitely test that out. So uh, here is the hard drive controller again. I know this isn't the most elegant way to uh, display the card, but I just pulled it out. It's quite hard to get out of there as well. Uh, looks like it's from. WDC dated 1985, uh, made in Ireland. Um, there's some more info on it, but I don't know. I don't really know a whole lot about. Uh, I don't know if there's anything special about some of these old MFM uh, or RLL controllers, uh, either or. So I don't know if any of them are supposedly like work better, or better, like higher end than the others. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't think I'm gonna keep it. I think I'm gonna put in a, something a little newer, uh, so maybe I could. Hopefully, maybe run in like an IDE drive or something, because I have a ton of those kicking around. And then here's the board again, a little bit less obscured by all those uh, cards. And, and again, there is our uh, CPU. should be a 10 megahertz 286. Uh, I'm not sure who it's from. Probably, maybe IB, or not sure who the manufacturer is. Can't really tell from here. I don't really fancy uh, unpopping the thing and taking it out. Bunch of jumpers, pretty big boards. You can see it goes all the way under the power supply. And that's pretty common for these earlier 386, uh, 8088 slash 8086 and 286 motherboards. They're usually, the earlier ones are usually uh, quite large with lots of chips on them. 
So here is the monitor I currently have paired with this machine. Now, like I said, when I got this machine, it was the bigger uh, Amdeck uh, orange monochrome monitor, kind of in the style of the early IBM monitors, uh, kind of like those guys or that guy there, kind of bigger, boxy monitor. Uh, this guy here is, I keep wanting to call this Spectre, but there's no, like, P at the beginning. I think it's Scepter uh, monitor. So, yeah, Scepter, I believe. Uh, I don't know why, I just want to call it Spectre for whatever reason. Uh, so this is a monochrome monitor. Um, this is a amber monochrome monitor. We got a brightness, we've got like a power, like an interesting looking power button uh, right here. Power LED, um, not sure, like brightness and maybe contrast. Uh, but anyways, this is pretty interesting monitor because when you look at the side, it's actually very sort of slimline. It almost, it almost kind of looks like an LCD from the front from a certain angle. Like, like at a glance, it just kind of looks like an LCD, which is kind of weird. Uh, but no, it is a CRT. Uh, kind of a weird design. Maybe kind of reminds me a little bit of the Apple monochrome monitor. So uh, not very heavy at all. Very kind of small. It's actually uh, just aesthetically wise. It's probably kind of too small for this uh, to be sitting on top of this machine actually. The Amdeck aesthetically I think suits this one much better but uh, I currently have put that monitor away so yeah I have not been able to find any information on this monitor. Uh, of course if we look at the back here just standard monochrome uh, connection with 15 pin I think and then we have this kind of uh, thing here for these uh, sort of older power supplies that have a special little connector for uh, monitors so that way we can like turn it on and then when we turn the system on the monitor turns on it's a uh, model mm1 again I can't find any information of this guy uh, online if we look here on the back I uh, might not be able to see it well uh, 1992 manufactured February 6th 1992 so uh, a couple days before my birthday actually and um, uh, this unit is intended to uh, be used with an IBM or IBM compatible PCAT or XT. It's, uh, it's not in the chronological. You'd think it would be PCXT or AT, but whatever. Um, and then, yeah, there's a little focus pot. Well, speaking of focus, there's a focus pot there and sub subbree. Not sure about that. So, uh, yeah, neat little monitor. It does seem to have a little bit looks like it almost has a little bit of like screen burn uh, in it uh, but it's not too bad from what I can see all right so I'm going to shut this light off over here and then uh, we'll power it up again power button I have to hit that switch on the back to power it on all right so I left uh, a little side light on so we get a little bit of light here center it a little bit more and then I'll press in the power and power it up and it's it's very loud uh, we can see here 512 KB and then it, we just get a boot disk failure and looking here on the keyboard the power LED on the keyboard has also lit up so I have to see okay uh, keyboard seems to be working I just have to see if there's something I need to hit to get into the BIOS um, five twelve kilobytes of memory is good. Boot disk failure. All right, all right. So after messing around with this, uh, I've discovered a few things. Uh, first of all, that this machine is currently in its state is pretty unstable, unfortunately. So. The first thing I learned is this keyboard has some issues. It mostly functions, but it seems to throw keyboard errors randomly on a uh, post, and it just sometimes it just stops working. Uh, this doesn't concern me too much because, well, I can just use a different keyboard. Uh, it's nice that this matches, but like I said, I can just use a different generic keyboard. Also, this could probably be fixed. It probably just needs opened and cleaned and. And I don't think it's something too major. Unfortunately, 
the more pressing issue is uh, this system just tends to lock up and it doesn't just lock up it does this kind of weird thing where uh, or at least something I don't see too often is when it does lock up it it stops working or at least it stops displaying for a while uh, so I'll be doing something it will lock up I'll turn it off when I power it back on uh, it makes the sounds like it's posting and working fine, but the screen, the display will be completely dead. Now if I like unplug it and I leave it sit there for a while, I can plug everything back in and it eventually posts like normal again. So uh, that seems like something weird is going on with like the battery, but as far as I can tell, there there is no battery in this machine. Uh, maybe there was an external battery at some point, which also brings up another issue is it the machine doesn't seem to have like a BIOS that I can get into. Um, I've tried all the, the usual suspects, uh, delete on post, F1, F12, uh, you know, control all the like, different combinations. Nothing brings up like a, a BIOS screen. Now I do suspect that maybe uh, this is kind of like some of those earlier IBMs where you need like a di uh, diagnostic or a setup disk and you put that in there and you do it all through a disk. Uh, and maybe it has to have a the external battery hooked up. So I've never seen a non IBM use those sort of startup disks though, but um, I'm sure they're out there. Uh, so anyways, yeah, it could be it just needs an external battery hooked up to it. Uh, other things it could be it could be the power supply isn't sending the right voltages and it's randomly locking it up. That sucks because it looks like. It's the size might be pro proprietary. Um, I don't know. That's not too bad. I could probably rig something up if it's the power supply. Probably one of the worst case scenarios that would be a usual suspect for these random lockups is the RAM. Unfortunately, the RAM is soldered onto the motherboard. And although technically, yes, it's possible to hunt down the specific RAM chips or chip that is bad, desolder them, solder on newer RAM, or even desolder all the RAM, solder in sockets, and put in new RAM. That is far more effort than I am willing to put into this machine, as I have several 286 machines, and it's just not worth my time or money to repair, unfortunately. That doesn't mean I'm going to throw it out into the garbage. Uh, I'll probably just pass it along to someone that does have the money and time to fix it, and inclination. I do not. Um... But I, I am going to try some, some basic things. I, I will try a power supply thing. Maybe I'll hunt down uh, an external battery. I, I can't find... I can find, like, the jumper layout for this motherboard, but I can't find anything like a manual or, uh, you know, anything... or any, like, setup disk. Uh, you know, my Google Foo isn't that great, so maybe it's just me, but I don't know. So anyways, I haven't done anything to this. I'm just going to show you what I mean. I'm going to power it up and we'll see how long uh, I get along before it locks up. Okay, everything's plugged in. I am going to insert, I have this uh, MS-DOS uh, disk for uh, 3.60 kilobyte. This is a boot disk for MS-DOS 3.3. I didn't make this. This is available from, I got this online, eBay, at a uh, seller retro disks. It's kind of silly because obviously I have the means to make these discs and the ability and stuff, but man, I, I cannot understate how actually lazy I am with this stuff. And I'd rather just throw somebody a couple bucks to have them do it for me than go through the rigmarole. I, I call me stupid, I don't know, it just, whatever. <laughs> it's just less hassle for me. Uh, I think it was like 14 bucks, whatever. Uh, they offer other discs. I recommend them. This disc's had this disc has been uh, rock solid for me. So I'm gonna power it on and uh, let's see how far we get. Let me make sure I have a. Okay, yeah, I have uh, this nice newer compact uh, keyboard. I've had this for years. I just have one of those AT adapter plugs on the end of it. So here we go. I'm gonna power it on. And it should. It's been sitting here for a while. Okay, yeah, there we go. And it should be loading it up. I obviously have the face plate off because I've been working on it. So it should, yeah, correct time and date. It doesn't know because there's no battery. Hit and enter, hit it twice, and voila, there we are. We are in the operating system. I can run the directory 
command. And so we're now running DOS off the disk. I'm going to remove the disk and I'm going to try this Merry Christmas jingle. This is like a little quick little jingles program. And uh, let's see how far we get with this. Let's do a directory. And uh, one exe, which is jingle. Don't know if you could see it there. There might be a little, little bit of glare. Let me turn that glare off. Uh, whoops. All right. So let me try. Let me run jingle. Is that spelled right? Yep. That's. I can see the disk. It's try loading. Wow, it actually has gotten far. Last time I tried this, it locked up in mid-jingle. Uh, let me turn the light back on here, because we're not getting anything on the screen. Now, I'm not sure if it, at this point, if it locked up, or if maybe it doesn't support, like, a Hercules mode. I suppose I should have tried a game <laughs> or something that I know... Um, works. I, I don't actually know if it's locked up at this point. Oh, I hit enter, and, uh, huh. Hmm. Probably a poor, cho poor choice of thing. Let me, I haven't even confirmed this card actually does Hercules mode, so, uh, let's try this again with something else. Uh, okay, so it also appears that Perhaps this disk drive also needs some maintenance, as it does things pretty reliably, like it will load that OS disk, but other disks that I know con are confirmed working, I've run them many times in other machines. Um, for instance, this is Airborne Ranger. We've used this to test uh, Hercules mode very recently in a video. I know that disk works, and unfortunately it gives errors. We get data error, sector not found, data error. Um, so, yeah, do a video on the NBI 4200, I said. It will be an easy video, I said. Uh, let me try this. And, oh, and here again is the problem. I hit R to retry, and the system is completely locked up again. So, uh, watch this. So, I will hit the reset button. Actually, I'll, I'll remove the disk. I will hit the reset button right here. Okay. Nothing. It, yeah, I'm get, trying to give it a minute. Nope. Nothing at all. And then I'll do a hard reset. Kill the power. Power it back on. And... Again, uh, it doesn't search, and we have nothing up here. So, uh, yeah, I, I am really starting to suspect. I wonder if it's the battery, and I have to do a setup, or I don't know. Uh, it's this is a little bore. Not this is a little annoying. I might have to step away from this video for a while. I'm gonna try some other. I'm gonna. I am not going to use this hard drive. It's just drawing power right now. It doesn't even work, or maybe it does work, and I just it's just not set up. Either way, I'm going to remove it. I'll probably test it in another system, but I need to simplify this setup here. Um, so I'm going to remove that hard drive. I'll try some things, and then uh, maybe we'll be back uh, with it working. So here is the hard drive I pulled out, and it actually just has rails. So I just had to disconnect it and then push the little rails in and pull it out. It is very dusty. We have a manufacturing date of 1988. I'm, I'm guessing this is the original drive that came in this machine. It's Mini Scribe, uh, model 3650. So I believe, I believe this is a 42 megabyte uh, hard drive. So, uh, yeah, not really a monster of a hard drive though. It is, it isn't overly heavy or big though for the the type of drive it it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it it's working. It might just be not set up in this machine, but I wasn't going to use it either way, so I've removed it, and I'll set it and its controller on the side. We've seen the controller before again. It's from Western Digital. Big, chunky thing. Um, so now I just 
Need to find another controller, put it in there. But yeah, we'll see if I get, get any better results with this thing removed. Maybe another controller. Uh, I put in this uh, controller uh, for the floppy drive. And then I'm using a card here with kind of its own BIOS for controlling the uh, hard drive here. And uh, I can get into this machine, as in I've used... First of all, I've used the floppy disk, as we've seen. We were able to get in with uh, DOS 3.3 via the floppy. Still had lockups. Uh, booting, I can boot off this drive, actually, with that uh, controller here. And it will boot into DOS 6.22. Very bare bones. A uh, copy of 6.22 on here, uh, and nothing else. And it'll work for a second, and then it will lock up. And I generally see that issue with memory, uh, like bad memory, where we're just getting random lockups. So I was looking at some schematics and stuff online, and this definitely is 512. Uh, I believe this board can take a maximum, if I fill these up, it can take a maximum of one megabyte on this board, but right now it has 512 on it, and I've double-checked all the jumpers and switches, and everything looks good. Uh, so my guess is, unfortunately, these chips, the 512, are soldered on, and but my guess is one or multiple chips are bad, and as the computer's running, it's locking up, and it's it's really not worth my time and effort to try to pull all this apart and desolder chips and try to find if that's even the problem. That's my best guess, but... Alright, so I have all the lights turn out. So I'm going to hit power. And then you should see the monitor come to life here in a moment. And there we go. So I'll see if I can zoom into that guy a little bit. There we have the... It's probably a little blurry. So, starting MS-DOS, so we are getting into DOS. Yeah, that's really blurry. Sorry. So, we are going into DOS. It's asking the date and time. Obviously, there's no battery, so I can skip through that. And voila, we're in DOS uh, 6.22. And I can take a look there at uh, what's on the hard drive. Uh, I think it's coming up, it's like a 22, uh, well at least what it's showing here is about 22 megabytes. It seems to be working, I, usually at this point it's locked up already, so it's actually doing a little bit, a little bit better than it usually does here. Uh, let's, let me, tr yeah, see, there it goes, I just tried to type, and, it, and I'm getting nothing, let me, so yeah, I can, Nothing. So, a little bit longer. That that took maybe 10 seconds, 15 seconds longer than usual to lock up on me, but that's what's happening. Um, so I can get into an OS, I can poke around for, you know, half a minute, and then it will usually lock up on me. So, it, it, usually in my experience that's indicative of memory, and it doesn't seem to be the memory's easy to replace on this uh, machine. So, this might be the end of the video. I do have one idea. I can set the jumpers for, I think, 256 of memory? Uh, something along those lines. Two something of memory. So, if the bad memory is in the bank, the, uh, the second bank, and uh, we're just using the other bank, we should be okay. Uh, it, it's cutting our memory in half, but at least maybe we can have a semi-stable system. So I'm going to give that a try. It should just be one jumper I have to change, and um, hopefully that works. So we'll find out. So these jumpers right here, I believe, deal with setting the amount of memory. And so these are our two memory banks. This makes up the 512 that we're seeing here. So I think if I set it to, like, I think it's 256, it's to something. Um, I, I don't exactly know how this works, but if our bad memory is, like, say, over here, and then we don't, we're only using this bank here, uh, you know, maybe we can kind of sidestep the problem that way at the cost of half of our memory. Um, so I don't know. I'll find out. It should be... I think it's just uh, one jumper. I just moved this jumper down from 1, 2 to uh, 2, 3. And uh, I don't know. We'll see. 
So unfortunately that didn't seem to work. I did set it for 256. When it posted it confirmed 256 memory good. And then I, it, the same thing happens. I get in here and it will lock up after a few seconds. I tried, uh, you know, it did the directory fine. I tried running that chess program here. And uh, which color do you select? And you can see the cursor is still blinking. Um, but it just, it's not responding to the keyboard anymore. Now, I was thinking, I, I have tried several keyboards and I have the same issue. So it's not a keyboard problem. Um, but uh, maybe it's a, like, it could be something with the keyboard controller. It just stops the, the keyboard. Like it ha doesn't really lock up, but it stops registering the keyboard after a few seconds. That, that's strange. So, yeah, this, this machine might be a little bit beyond what I can uh, repair and deal with, so mm, I, I might toy around with it a little bit longer, but that, this might be the end of the video uh, for this machine. So I was doing more testing, and I was trying different like VGA cards to make sure it wasn't like messed up memory or something on the video card causing the issues, and I ended up getting this error. Uh, and the computer locked up, so this is really pushing me in the direction. I really think, unfortunately, that it's some kind of memory error with the onboard memory. And, unfortunately, that concludes our video on the NBI 4200. Um, didn't really get the results I wanted here. I was hoping I could get this thing running stably. We could get it running, we could get it to post, we can get it into an OS, but it just kept locking up tried to narrow down the issues and especially with that last air popping up I'm fairly certain it's the memory uh, which unfortunately in the case of this machine is soldered onto the motherboard so getting this up and going uh, if it is the memory which I'm pretty sure it is at this point is just a little out of the scope of what I can do and even what I'd be willing to do uh, Maybe if this was the last 286 on Earth or something, <laughs> I would maybe put in the effort to try to get it fixed. But it's really um, not really worth my time and effort uh, for this machine at the moment. But that might not be the end of the story for this thing. Uh, I was thinking about one of the upcoming videos I'm planning to do, and I'm actually planning to do another 386 video. Uh, I am kind of planning to build a really early 3D6, uh, like kind of CAD oriented. I have, I have a really old style, like really big 3D6 board full of chips. And I had a case picked out for it and I was going to put it together. And I was thinking this machine, like this isn't like a proprietary ish case. Uh, the only IO out the back is for the uh, AT keyboard. Uh, I mean, it has the NBI 4200 label and the 10 megahertz thing, which, you know, is its own thing. But it really is just a standard AT case. And the power supply seems good. Uh, the, the board should fit in. I should be able to just pull that board out and, and put it in another one. So I can technically turn this thing into like a 386 of maybe about the same era, actually. And I mean, even, I, I think the CPU in that board I have is a 20 megahertz 386DX, and the 10 megahertz thing is kind of like, uh, throws it off, but you can always think, well, like, I think when you turbo that board, it, it clocks down to 10 megahertz, so this could technically, like, function as a, a turbo button when it's, like, in, like, the slower, low speed mode. Uh, so I, you can make it make sense that way, uh, if, if the 10 megahertz display kind of bothers you. Uh, mismatched with the CPU, but I was I was thinking that, so I don't know. Um, here's a look at the board real quick. Here's a sneak peek. So here's the board. Yeah, it's a big guy. It's it's about the size of the board actually in this uh, machine. Maybe a slightly bit smaller actually, but I think it's about the same size. Unfortunately, all our memory here is um, socketed. We even have, I think, zip sockets uh, here, zip slots here. Um, so yeah, I think this would work pretty well in this machine. I think it would fit without any issue. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Should I leave this guy as it is and just pass it on to someone else that might want to put it in their collection or try to fix it and kind of keep it as it is? Or should I reuse this case essentially, pull the old motherboard and turn this 286 into a 386? So you let me know in the comments. If I get enough votes uh, one way or the other, I might go that way. If not, 
sneak peek on a video coming up. I'm going to be using this board and making a, a low-end uh, 386, and I have another case uh, if this guy loses the vote. But let me know in the comments. What do you think? Or if you have any ideas to fix this machine that are cheap and easy within my abilities, let me know. But if, if it's be outside of my abilities to uh, fix this board, let me know. Replace it with the 3, turn it into a 3D6, or just leave it as is. So, thank you for watching. Vote in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.